Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive, and welcome back to our Let's Play of Aftermath. And um, we have one kind of major correction from the last time, and unfortunately it means that uh, Grumple is almost dead. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is <laughs> this is the worst luck I've had in this game so far. Unbelievable. We we may not even make it past this first mission, which is absolutely hilarious. Um, but anyway, so Grumple, the last time he blocked the boomerang, right? I played a green card and um, added his defense of one to that, and he tied and he passed. And he successfully defended. However, that was a green card I initiated the defense with, not a blue card. So I don't get that bonus. So he actually got hit. So he's going to take another point of damage. So he is now up to three points of damage. One more point of damage. And he's out of the game. Or out of this uh, scenario for a bit. And he also becomes badly hurt. And badly hurt isn't quite as bad as it sounds. At least not right now. Um, if I draw the Calamity card, the Calamity... Uh, automatically pops if it hasn't yet and to remove this I need to take a nesting action which we are going to have to do we are we are very 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 much screwed on this expedition because we're going to have to take like two or three nesting actions which is going to put us over the time limit and it's also going to cost us a whole bunch of food so um yeah things are not looking good for our little critter heroes right now so anyways, it is uh, Grumple's turn now, and he is badly hurt, and uh, man, let's see if we can change the tide of this scenario <laughs> in any way. I'm going to draw the next five cards for Grumple, one, two, three, four, five, okay. I really need some good cards here. I've had the wor I don't know, yeah, just the worst shuffle ever on those cards, so okay. Jesus Christ, finally something good. We really need to get rid of these geckos. And so it is, I am going to, let's see. Um, I'm in the same space as the gecko leader. And the gecko leader has a defense of seven. Man, these guys are really strong. I've been wondering if they're supposed to be, <laughs> they're supposed to be in the game yet. Uh, okay, but let's see here. So I am, I really need to, uh, make sure to take care of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and do three. Okay, and then uh, Grumple has a plus two. So that brings his total up to five. Then I have um, this, which is a plus one. So that brings his total up to six. And then I'm gonna have to spend everything there. Um, I'm just gonna go, let's see. So it matches the color or the number, okay? And I can do that again by matching. I really need to make sure that I get this. So what I have right now, three, four, five, six, seven, eight against seven. I could still completely lose this on a turn, on a bad roll. So I'm gonna add another three because that matches that three there. So now my attack value is six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I know this is overkill, but I need to take care of these guys before they do any more damage. Um, I mean, look at that. He added a three and I minus one. So that brings him up to 10 and me at 10. So I barely beat him even <laughs> using all of my cards. This is, oh my God, this is so crappy. All right. I'm, I want to make sure I'm not cheating. So let's see, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, minus one is 10 and 10. So we beat, we, we master beat his defense. So we do beat him. Finally, we kill one of these damn geckos. My God, I am not looking forward to seeing a boss in this game. <laughs> that took three, like that took three of the most powerful, two of the most powerful cards and a two and I have only these left, so man. Okay, so those are gonna get discarded. All right, so Grumple has two cards left. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and use this as a uh, yellow search, so I can match that yellow. I'm gonna have a three. I need to get a two or higher, minus one, a two. What is going on? 
with that. Uh, all right, we really need some food because we're gonna we're gonna be burning through food like it's going out of style. And of course, we don't get any; we get scrap, which that's gonna bring us up to seven scrap. All right, Grumple's turn. He used all of his cards and barely accomplished anything. So now we are up to uh, we are over to Messiah. He's gonna go ahead and go here. All right. So we need to draw five cards for Messiah. One, two, three, four, five. And let's see what we get. Okay, uh, still no green cards to be able to move. Ah, boy, all right, well. Man, I cannot get to that gecko to kill him, I don't think. Let's see here. It's gonna cost me it's going to cost me three to move past this green line here. So that's for one. I have no green cards to attack with. So I think, nope, what we're going to do is we're going to have um, Isaiah move in here with Grumple. And then we are going to use this for a yellow two. Add that four. Okay, so four, we successfully search and we find two food. So now we're up to nine food. And I'm keeping this three defense card to hopefully be able to use that to defend. Okay, so he has, Messiah has that defense card left. And now we're back to Grumple. Uh, we have no threat on the threat track, so the enemies do not have a turn. So we're gonna move him up to the uh, number one spot there. All right. Okay, I think we might survive this. Uh, <laughs> we might actually survive this first mission. Um, all right, so we're back to Grumple's turn and we're gonna draw cards here. All right, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, okay, well, well man, we should, I wish, uh, I had these cards for Messiah last turn, but okay, so we're gonna spend one green card there to move Grumple into this space. And then I'm going to use this three as a red attack card. So that's gonna give me three and then plus one for his steak knife and plus two. So three, four, five, six against this gecko with a defense of six. So we're just looking at dice rolls here. Oh my God. Is this dice cursed or something? All right, so we don't get that attack. Hmm. That really sucks for Grumple there. So put him back. Now, one thing we can do is we can give um, the action, what is that? Uh, encourage. We can give an action card to a player that has two or fewer. So Messiah has three. So I'm gonna give Messiah this two. And then I'm gonna do that again. Has three or fewer cards? Two or fewer. Hmm, okay, so he can't take any more. So I guess we will just hold on to these cards for Grumple. And now we are at Messiah's turn. So let's see, Messiah has a three and a two, so I need to draw uh, three more cards. One, two, three. And okay, so we do have this uh, threat card to add to the threat deck, which means that the Gecko Hunter is going to get a turn this phase because uh, we have a number of threat cards equal or greater than the number of uh, enemy cards. So let's see here. Let's see what Messiah can do. Messiah needs green to attack. Um, okay, there we go. I can initiate attack with that for two. And it is a ranged attack because I do have a ranged weapon of three his little crossbow, his toothpick crossbow. 
I'm going to match that two for a four. And then he has four, five, six, seven. And this gecko has a defense of six. There we go, finally. Okay, so we take, <laughs> we take care of that gecko. Meaning we remove all the enemy cards from the board. Now, because we finally beat that first encounter, we do get two scrap, bringing us up to nine scrap. I'm gonna discard these. Now, Messiah does have this three and a one left. The situation is now safe. So let's see, can I do anything? I think I'm gonna spend I'm going to keep that three. I am going to spend this uh, this one here just to move um, there. I want to try to get this. And then let's see here. We do need to nest. So at the end of any player's turn, as long as the situation is safe, which it now is safe, uh, the party can rest while nesting. Resolve the following in order. Okay, each character may spend one food to heal one. So starting in order with Messiah, since it was his turn, I'm gonna take us down to eight food and he's gonna heal for one. Okay, then I remove all negative status effects. He doesn't have any. I discard all batteries. I can spend, I can spend um, scrap to repair an item and I have to advance the, uh, time by one. Then we're player's turn as long as the party can rest while well, nesting resolve and fit. Okay. So we're also going to spend one food to heal uh, Grumple. So Grumple is now down to two. Now, unfortunately, we're probably going to have to do that again to heal Grumple um, again. But I think Messiah is going to be done with his turn. He's going to hold on to that three that he has there. So let's see here. We are back to the top of the turn. We have no threat to deal with. And we are at Grumple's turn. So Grumple is going to draw five cards. One, two. All right. Oh, and Grumple rested, so we're going to remove his badly hurt. Put that back into the deck of um, afflictions here. There are quite a few. And of course, there are multiple copies of, of um, the same ones, but they have all the rules on it, which is pretty nice. Okay, so we're gonna shuffle up the, um, shuffle up the rest of this action deck here. Hopefully we can get a better shuffle this time. Oops, all right. We've got that shuffled up. We've got two, and then he needs one more. So bringing his hand total up to five. Okay, wow, a lot of ones there again. All right, so we're gonna put this back over on the threat track. So now our threat track has um, two threat cards on it. On this scenario, whenever there are four threat cards, we have to, um, we have to trigger this surge ability. It's usually something bad. So it's kind of like the timer. It's kind of like the, the cheese wheel in Mice and Mystics, but it's not quite as strict. So what are we going to do here? I'm, I, want, I want Messiah to go over here and take that because we are going to need that again. Uh, we're going to need that to hopefully find some more food. So I think what I'm going to do is I am just going to have, uh, I'm just going to hold, I'm just not going to do anything. I'm going to hold on to these cards and have Grumple just stay there. All right. So now I'm over to Messiah. Messiah has one blue three card. So he needs to draw four more. One, two, three, four. All of the threat cards are now back in the deck. Okay. We didn't draw, <laughs> we didn't draw any. All right. So what are we going to do here? Um, Let's go ahead and let's say I need two points of movement. So I'll use this, um, I'll use this blue two to go one, two. Now this spot here is a hiding spot. 
and small. So Grumple is considered big, so he can't be hiding. He can go in that spot, but he's not considered to be hiding. Any other character who's in a hiding spot can't be targeted by any enemies. And oh yeah, we know if we forgot, we forgot to read a couple of these little insight um, places where we were. So let's read this one, which we forgot last turn, which is spot number one. It says, uh, you notice a human shoe, once a fancy vibrant red, it is now covered in a thin layer of dust. Some say when the humans disappeared, all that was left were their shoes and wisps of dust that drifted away in the breeze. Huh, I wonder, did like, were the humans like evaporated by something? crazy all right and now we're in this spot here which is three and this is just kind of a rule reminder uh the shadow of an abandoned car looks like it would make a great hiding place and then reminder hiding spot a character on that on a space like this with an eye with a cross through it uh cannot be targeted by an enemy in a different space an enemy will not move toward a character that is hiding unless there are no other characters to move towards so what we're going to do is we want to get this uh, token there. So we're going to spend a two. We're going to match the color to bring that up to three. We're going to roll that and add zero. So we beat it for two or more. And we find two more food. Excellent. We're up to nine food. And I think what we're going to do is just to be safe, we are going to um, do another resting action. So each we can uh, each spend a food to heal we're gonna do that so we're gonna go back down to seven food and bringing grumple down to one and bring one wound and uh, completely healing at Messiah um, change all poisonous wounds to normal we don't have to do that remove all negative effects we don't have to do that remove all batteries we don't have to do that nothing to repair and now we advance our timer to one to one more which our time we're at three now so a uh, quick update, we have three, zero clues. We have nine scrap, our morale is still at five, our population is still at eight, and our food is now at seven. Okay, so that is, let's go ahead and finish up Messiah's turn by having him move. Uh, I'm gonna spend my three and have him go one, two, and then he's on this exit token, which means he can leave at any time. So he's going to go ahead and leave. And he'll hold that green two. Okay, so now we have to uh, check for threat. We only have two threat cards on the board. So nothing triggers, there are no enemies. And let's see here. Um, we have, we're back to Grumple's turn. So Grumple has four cards, so he needs to draw one more. Okay, so no threat. <laughs> and he is just going to go ahead and exit the board, which means that we need to move our marker to the next space. All right, so we did it. We wasted a lot of time nesting though. So we are going to go ahead and move on to Injo and look at number 43, page 43 here. So let's see what is in store at Injo. So Injo is a old, uh, dilapidated, ruined uh, vending machine. Uh, obviously it used to say enjoy, but uh, through legend and through uh, Time has eroded the Y away. We are left the critters and only know this structure as the legendary Enjo, Dungeon of Enjo. So if this is your first time on this page during the campaign, read the following. Frankie and Benji were mice and they sat beneath the dusk in the office cubicle staring longly at the temple to food that stood proudly in the nearby break room. Bold primary colors covered the temple's exterior, save for the plexiglass that allowed worshippers to gaze upon the edible marvels within. Frank and Benji sat and stared dumbly at the temple as humans approached it and fed it offerings of paper and metal discs. And the temple repaid them with the pungent delights wrapped in crinkly bags, or at least it did when it found them worthy. Those who were deemed unfit were denied their prize. 
They would curse. They would strike the temple, demanding access to the withheld love of their God. But their only recourse was to slink away in shame or to sacrifice more paper and coin. Frankie and Benji dreamed desperately of joining the temple and feasting upon its many treats, but it seemed that joyous event would never arrive. But one day, the building shook with a terrible ferocity, and that break room collapsed revealing a solid blue sky beyond. Frankie and Benji watched a, watched a distant plane plummet from the sky. They heard automobiles crash in the streets below. Summoning what courage they had, they crept to the crumbling edge where, there, where once there had been a break room. Wind whipping at their fur and lo, down on the streets, two stories below was the temple. Unmolested, by its fall and uncaring of the break room's demise. It stood there as tall and as proud as ever, angrily daring any and all to try, just try to oppose the God of treats. The treats that were never empty, the treats that were never empty lay empty. There was not a human being in sight and Frankie and Benji exchanged glances. Things were looking up. All right, so we need to um, traverse up this pile of rubble and reach the joys of Enjo, of the treat god, looking for a bag of onion snoodles, right? Is that what it is? Yep, onion snoodles. And I'm going to go ahead and read the start and setup, and then we're going to go ahead and... Um, call it for this episode. So we need to advance the time one, which brings us up to four. Remember, in this mission, we have a time of five that we're trying to solve this by. That's it, says Grumple, and she gives a whistle. Jeepers, says Ringer in a hushed, in hushed tones. You stand in the shadow of a large red mailbox. Before you sits a tall heap of concrete chunks, and beside it is the crumbling ruin of a high-rise office building, sunbeams streaming through its corporate corpse. At the crest of the heap is a colorful vending machine that catches the eye, the letters E-N-J-O, clearly visible. Enjo, whispers Maziah under his breath. Jeepers, ringers, repeats. Set up. Okay, we're going to set up the mice at the starting spot, or the critters. Uh, we're going to place clue tokens, and we're going to draw an encounter card. So let's see here where our clue tokens are going to go. We have uh, two right in front of us. And we have one there, one there, and then we have one more. So, and we're going to go up to a level three there, because we've exhausted all of our level two um, We've exhausted all of our level two tokens. So now we're up to level three. And then we also need to uh, generate an encounter by drawing the next card in the encounter deck here. Nomads. All right, the situation is hostile. Um, there aren't good these aren't good furs, observes Grumple. We're in for a fight. Set up. Encounter. Uh, number of nomads equals the number of characters. If we defeat them, we get to scrap. All right, so we need to find the nomads here, which are these little guys, the meeklings. And there are four different meeklings. And we need to randomly generate two or draw two of those. So we have a meekling and a meekling leader. We're going to randomly place those on the threat track here. All right. Now, unfortunately, they made a mistake in my game and they sent me a wrong. So I do have the leader and I have this guy. I didn't get a square based uh, meekling. I actually got two of the hero ringer uh, minis in, this, in my uh, box. So they are going to be sending me a correction there. But we have the circle base is the meekling leader. And then the um, pentagon is the meekling, the regular meekling. And those guys are going to be coming in from right over here at this cinder block. All right. 
And now I think we're going to end it there. So we have, let's see, Grumple has one uh, wound. And it is going to be his turn next. And here's his starting hand. So we're not going to have to draw any cards for Grumple, which is nice. And then uh, Messiah has no wounds, all healed up. And he has this, uh, this two there. So, all right. Well, I think that's it. Luckily, we uh, survived that last um, scenario. We made it through on our way to Enjo to figure out what we need to do to get those onion snoodles and hopefully make it back to our settlement in one piece and without taking too much more time. We'll see how that goes. So, all right, y'all, um, everybody take it easy and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.